All right, welcome back to our third video in this 2022 to 2023 Division E Math Olympiad series. We already went over the answers and solutions to contests one and two in the previous lessons. And now I'm going to bring to you the five questions from contest three of that same year. All right, so here is 3A. Anne and Andy are asked to evaluate 9 minus parentheses 5 minus 2. Anne evaluates the expression correctly. Andy evaluates incorrectly by ignoring the parentheses. Anne's answer is greater than Andy's answer by the number n. What is the value of n? So here it's asking us to find the value of a number. And this number is the difference between Anne's answer and Andy's answer. In order to find n, our first step is to find what Anne and Andy each got, right? So here is what Anne have done. Anne does it correctly. Math Olympiad is a problem that can be solved by all of the math concepts you learn in normal grade school, late elementary school to middle school. Now, I believe that the order of operations has already been taught by then, so this is something that uses an order of operations. Parentheses, they mean to do the things inside them first. Anne follows this rule, and what she gets is 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. This is Anne's answer. Then it's Andy's answer. What did Andy get? Well, Andy did not follow this rule by ignoring the parentheses, which means that he did it like 9 minus 5 minus 2, which is equal to 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. So Anne's answer is 6 and Andy's answer is 2. The number n is the difference between these two numbers. So 6 minus 2 is equal to 4, so n is equal to 4. Now, in the answer box, you don't need to write n is equal to 4. All you have to do is write the number 4. And if you are doing this in person, remember, you don't need to put any units into the answer box. It's not required, and if you do have the right number part, but you put in the wrong units, you can still get a cross for that answer. So it's just more safe for you to just put in the numerical part. Now let's do the second problem. The number 2022 is a multiple of 6. Including 2022, how many four-digit counting numbers in the form of B, 0, B, B, where B is a digit and the second digit is 0, are divisible by 6? Now, there's two things I want to touch on before going into this solution. First, what is a counting number? Counting numbers are basically positive integers. They mean the same thing. So it starts with 1, and you just keep adding 1 from there. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? 0 would not be a counting number. Any fractions or decimals will not be a counting number. And any negative numbers will also not be counting numbers. And now we have to talk about multiples, multiples and factors. In Math Olympiad, a lot of the times when you get a number sense question, it's going to ask you the multiple of something, if this is divisible by that. So when answering questions like these, you really need to know some of the basic divisibility rules. What is a divisibility rule? A divisibility rule is a rule that tells you whether a number is divisible by another number. Now, we actually made a video on this covering all of the basic divisibility rules that you need in order to solve problems like this. So that link will be in the description down below. And I highly suggest you to watch that video first. It won't just help you in Math Olympiad. It will probably also help you when dealing with stuff like fractions or dealing with just normal class problems you may encounter in school. Knowing these divisibility rules allow you to say, oh, this is divisible, this is not divisible, this is possible, this is not possible. Let's first assume that you know the divisibility rules already. What is the divisibility rule of 6? Well, 6 itself does not have a unique divisibility rule, but 6 can break up into 2 times 3. And now both 2 and 3 have their own divisibility rules. For 2, it has to be an even number. And for 3, 
you have to add up all of the digits. That is called the digit sum. And the, if the digit sum is divisible, then the actual number would also be divisible by 3. That is the divisibility rules of 2 and 3. Now, if you're going to see if a number is divisible by 6, it just has to meet both of these requirements. Now we can ask ourselves, how many four-digit numbers in the form of B0, BB, so three of the same digits, and one zero, meet both of these requirements? Well, first, it has to be an even number. The only even number digits we have, so let me write B0, BB out, and the only even digits we have is zero, two, four, six, and eight. Can B be equal to zero? No, because then it would not be a four-digit number, so we can cross that out. In all of these other numbers, 2022, 4044, you'll see that they actually all meet the requirement. All of their digit sums add up to a multiple of three. This is six, this is 12, 18, not equal. 18 and 24. All of their digit sums are divisible by 3, which means that these four numbers are the counting numbers that meet these requirements. Now, a lot of kids might just go straight in and list these four numbers in, which is not the case, because let's go back into the question. It says, how many counting numbers? How many? So instead of writing all of these in, we just count how many of them there are. One, two, three, four. Our final answer would also be four. You could write four numbers or you can just write four. So here, it's very important to go back because you did so much work already to remember to go back and to actually think if my answer answers what it's asking for. A lot of the times people might have all the exact same work in all of the correct work, but when they go back and answer the question, it's often using a different unit or it doesn't answer the question correctly. So when solving problems like this, it's very important to do that. Now let's do the third problem. Lenny sold lemonade at a lemonade stand for $1.25 per cup. He had some change in the drawer at the beginning of the day, and that change was less than the price of one lemonade. At the end of that day, Lenny had $29.22 in the drawer. How many lemonades did Lenny sell that day? So we know that the equation is 1.25 per cup. Let's say C is the amount of cups plus a certain amount of change. Let's call that X is equal to 29.22. And X is less than 1.25, which is the price of one cup of lemonade. So this is the information that we can write into mathematical equations or inequalities in order to help us solve this problem. Now, this may be how a middle schooler might solve this if you have already touched into algebra. But what if you're still in elementary school? Lots of elementary schools don't know how to use algebra yet. So this can also be solved using non-algebra solutions. Let's first start by counting up by 1.25 until we can't fit any more into 29.22. So that would be the same as 2,922 2 divided by 125, which in the end equals 23.376 which means that the whole number of cups that is sold would be 23 lemonades. So 23 lemonades were sold. Now, what is the question asking? It's saying, how many lemonades did Lenny sell that day? And since 23 lemonades is the answer we got, I feel confident in just putting it into the answer box. But let's do some checking first. Is this, is this reasonable? Well, let's substitute 23 lemonades as C. Okay, so 1.25 times 23, what does that equal? That would equal $28.75. 
Now let's find the difference between 29.22 and 28.75, which is $0.47. Is that less than the, than the price of one lemonade? Yes. So our final answer would be 23. Now let's do problem D. What fraction of the figure shown is shaded? Note, the figure is composed entirely of one by one squares. So here is the figure from the contest. I did my best to try to reconstruct it. And here are the individual one by one squares. There is a very simple method to doing this. One way is to just count. Math Olympiad is not super hard. It's just the, the important part of this is to make sure that you count all of the right spots and didn't miscount or overcount. This is just a counting problem, really. Math Olympiad, again, as I said, can be solved using the basic knowledge you've learned from your normal average school. So let's first find the total amount of cubes that there is. So since this is 9 and this is 9, 9 times 9 is 81. So we know that the denominator of the fraction is 81. Now, how many cubes are colored in? Let's count. And I'm going to put a little mark in one cube once I've counted it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Now we have the inside of 1. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So our final answer would be 32 over 81 of the figure is shaded. So here is the final question. Again, often this is the most challenging and the most difficult to solve. So here we are given a diagram and we're being asked how many different paths are there starting at A starting at A and ending at B while traveling along the given line. Another requirement is that each step that we move must move to the next lower row. So you can't go to the side or you can't go to the previous row. You have to keep going down. So this way. There are two main ways that we can solve this problem. The first way is to give each of these dots a symbol or a letter name that we can organize ourselves by. A lot of this method is being very organized and keeping your thinking clear. So let's say we would give this C, D, E, we're giving each of these stops a number to solve by or a letter. And then using those, we can organize our thoughts more. So, but that way is just the, you know, the old school way of starting at one and then going and counting each possible method, basically. But there is also a more simpler and a faster method. And this is the method that I'm going to share with you. Here we start at A. And what I'm going to do is in each circle, I'm going to write a number. And what does that number mean? That number means the number of possibilities to get to this point. For example, what number should I put in this middle circle right here? I would cross it off or I would put a zero. This zero represents that this point, there is absolutely no way that we can ever touch this point. Why? It's not connected to any other point, which means that it's just kind of isolated right there, sitting there by itself, and no one can get to it. Or even if this helps, you could just cross it out. So using this method, let's start at the very beginning. What is the number of possibilities that is at A? Well, only one way because we all start there. You have to start at A. And then what you do is you go to the next row. There, it, This circle will have a one as well because the only way to get to this point from a higher row is from point A. So will this circle and so will this circle. The next section is when it gets interesting. The two at the sides here, at the corners, will still be a one. 
because the only way to get to these two points is going this way and then going this way. There is no other connection that can give it, that can make it a two. But this one right here, it's a bit, it's a different situation. There are three lines that all run into it, which is this line right here, this line right here, and this line right here. So then what we do is we take those previous points and we add all of their numbers up, making this number three. Now, what would this one be? Well, how many lines are running into it? Only one, right? So we're going to write one. We're just going to keep the previous number. Now here, this dot has two lines running into it. And all we have to do is add those two previous numbers up. One plus one is equal to two. Here, this is still just a one because there is it, it's only linked from the top by one line. So we just continue and we keep that previous number. Now this point right here, it's connected by three lines. This one right here, this one right here, and this one right here. So we add up one, three, and one, which gives us five. Our final answer would be two plus one plus five, which is equal to eight. So our final answer for this last question is eight. Again, solving math Olympiad questions do take a lot of effort. You do have to go back and check all of your work. Make sure your your thinking is clear and you're writing down each step because often that's when you might realize that you've made a mistake and you can go back and find where you made that mistake. Math Olympiad is such a great way in reviewing, really. So reviewing is such a great way to kind of tell yourself where to improve next time and to learn on from your past mistakes. Thank you so much for watching Three Inquisitive Kids. I really enjoyed sharing this video with you guys. And if you liked it, please click the subscribe button for more from this series.